morning, friends. Welcome to worship at Central Square Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. I'm Reverend Beth Stotts, and leading worship with me this morning is our Minister of Music, Julia Scott Carey, our Director of Video Evangelism, Paul Holmes, and our Senior Deacon, Deb Sorkman. Welcome, each and every one of you. All, all are welcome here at Central Square Church, whether you are old or young, rich or poor, gay or straight, regardless of your country of origin or ethnic background or political persuasion. You are welcome here, and we're glad that you're here worshiping with us. We are a Christian community of people who are reaching out to our neighbors at home and abroad, sharing our faith and our resources. That is our mission statement. That is what binds us together as a community and as a people of faith. Today is Heifer Sunday, and um, our kids downstairs are going to be fundraising for um, animals, and they'll tell you about it a little bit later. Um, but I'm just super excited all of you are here to join in for Heifer Sunday. We begin our worship each week with announcements. If you have an announcement to share, please come forward at this time. Good morning, Chrissy Canizo. Sorry, I just bumped in here. Chrissy Canizo for Heifer Sunday. Um, our children have been working super hard the last month, and um, as Reverend Beth said, they are downstairs working um, to set up and to put prices on all of their items. Um, and in case anyone didn't bring those um, dollar bills that I had mentioned for the last month. Um, <laughs> Um, Diane Shively um, has been so gracious to set up um, the QR codes for PayPal and Venmo. So, yay! We'll take any cash or credit or um, payment. So, um, we are super excited. The children have very, very hefty goals. Um, one group is trying to raise $860. Uh, um, and the other group is trying to raise $130. So we'll greatly appreciate any um, your support. So thank you. And Christy is going to, going to talk about um, Heifer. So I just want to explain a little bit why Heifer is important. So Heifer provides families in need with um, long-term funding so they can deal with issues such as hunger and poverty. And it also allows us to create a bunch of fun things. So come check out what we've been working on. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Are there any other announcements? I have a big one. Oh. Lent starts Lent. on Wednesday. Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. And I read recently that um, you can't spell Valentine's without Lent. V A L E N T I N. Oh. Valentine's Wednesday. Lent. Oh, come on, people. That's very cool. So, anyway, Lent starts Wednesday, Valentine's Day. Um, 7 p.m. is our worship service. We will have imposition of ashes on foreheads or hands, whichever you're comfortable with. So I hope to see you uh, Wednesday at 7. Thank you. All right, I'd like to invite you to our Ritual of Fellowship. If you're here in person, there are pads at the end of the pew aisle. If you could please sign your name so we know that you're here in person in person worshiping with us, and we can greet each other by name after worship. Also, if you're not getting our Monday email that has everything about the life of, of the church, then make a note in there, or if there's anything you need from the office or Reverend Beth or a deacon, you can also make a note on that pad. And if you're worshiping with us remotely, please give us a thumbs up or a like or a good morning so we know that you're here worshiping with us as well, and you can send an email to the church office if there's anything that you need. All right, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our introit.
Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the entry into worship. <clears throat> Today we are celebrating the holy light that illuminated Jesus. We celebrate his transfiguration on the mountain. Light, light of light, light transfusing and transforming light. light. Divine light flooding out the shadows. It is the same God who at the beginning said, let there, there be light, who has shown in our hearts with an understanding of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The mightiest one of all, God the Eternal, speaks and summons the whole earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. From God's holy mountain, God's light, the perfection of beauty shines out. Let us join our hearts and our voices in our opening prayer. Holy God, in this hour of worship, please help us listen to you. Help us open our hearts to your grace. Help us believe, help us love. Show us your dazzling glory hidden in our everyday lives. Though we struggle with belief and unbelief, make us one with you and let us bring your life and light to all people. Amen. And let us join our voices in singing our opening hymn, number 182. be seated <clears throat> and join me in our prayer for transformation and new life on this Transfiguration Sunday. God invites us to come to worship as our whole selves. God offers us a new beginning day by day and week by week. Trusting in God, we pray for transformation and new life. 
Mighty God, you call to us and ask us to live in covenant and walk in righteousness. Yet we forsake your covenant and walk in ways of injustice, ignorance, or disdain. Your beauty shines forth in creation, yet we abuse and tarnish what you have created. May we be willing to do the hard thing. May we see what is happening. May we see what we do. Renew us. Let us receive a double portion of your renewing spirit. God's glory shines forth, and God judges with grace and mercy. God gives us renewed life, and our spirits rise. Thanks be to God. And souls and listen. Our gospel reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 10, found on page 820 in your Pew Bible. Six days later, 
Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Our epistle reading is the uh, Corinthians, second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 through 6, found on page 939. Therefore, since, is in my right? No, sorry. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. May we be blessed by hearing of the word of our Lord. Uh, 13 years ago this week, I visited Yosemite National Park. Um, each February, visitors to Yosemite witness an awe-inspiring firefall at Horsetail Falls. You may have heard about it. It's an illusion of a fiery cascade flowing off the eastern edge of El Capitan. Thanks to a very specific alignment of the setting sun, the second week of February, and then the mist off the waterfall creates this illusion of fire coming down. So during mid to late February each year at Horsetail Falls, um, those falls only flow during the winter and spring months during the snow melt. Um, they transform into this glowing stream of lava just for a few minutes just for a few minutes, um, right before sunset. But all the conditions, of course, have to be right. For the magic to happen, a lot of variables have to be in sync. There's got to be enough water flow off the fall, clear skies, and just the right temperatures to prevent the waterfall from freezing. 
Um, again, prime viewing, the prime viewing window for the Fire Falls is from mid-February to the end of the month, with the best light occurring five to 15 minutes before the sun dips below the horizon. And it, again, it only lasts for just a few minutes, but it is dazzling and spectacular. 13 years ago, when Jay and I went to Yosemite, we were overcome with emotion upon viewing the firefall. It was like nothing we'd ever witnessed before. It was magical and deeply spiritual. A few years later, we were witness to another incredible natural phenomenon. In August of 2017, we traveled down to my mom's house in North Carolina to experience the full eclipse of the sun. And earlier this week, we booked our travel for the next solar eclipse viewable in the US, which will actually be on my husband's birthday, April 8th this year. But sadly, the next eclipse won't be visible in the US um, until 2044. So I'm set on making sure that we are in a prime location to witness this awesome phenomenon as well. The feeling that these experiences evoke in me is so deeply spiritual that sometimes I just can't find words for how important they have been to my spiritual journey. Visiting Yosemite, seeing the fire fall, washing my hands and my face and my feet in the Merced River, experiencing the sun hiding behind the moon in daylight with crescents dancing on the ground during the eclipse. These are experiences, moments in time, where it felt like the veil that separates the tangible, rational world from the esoteric, deeply spiritual world. That veil is lifted. The Celtic tradition calls these moments, these places, thin places. Thin places describe the space between our world and the great mystery. That space between heaven and earth, between the divine and the human, between matter and spirit, between the eternal and the temporal. In the thin place is where the duality disappears and we stand in union and in wholeness and ultimately holiness as well. And while each of us may have experienced a thin place in our lives, the difficulty for us is that we often limit our world and our experiences to the five senses, to the things which we understand cerebrally, the things that are explainable, logical. The five senses themselves in some way become the veil that separates us from that other world. Thin places, however, invite us to step outside the five senses and to step outside what we know to be true, outside of what we can understand and explain. They invite us to travel inward, to be astounded by the greatness of God, to enter the mysterium tremendum in Latin, the tremendous mystery of God. God's presence and God's love. In the thin places, we know ourselves to be eclipsed by the holy. Thin places transform our lives. The veil parts and we know ourselves to be different. We and our whole world stand in a different light. There is a clear before and after upon visiting a thin place. For me, there's who I was before Yosemite and who I am after. And my guess is you have something in your life that marks a clear before and after as well. Perhaps it was the birth of a child, holding a child. Or maybe it was an illness you recovered from. Or maybe it was your own experience of stepping foot in a holy place. Perhaps it was visiting the home of your ancestors. These thin places, these experiences, they change us. And this is what happened to Peter and James and John. Jesus led them to a thin place, a place where human ears would hear God's voice. Human eyes would see divine light. 
and human life would be enveloped in the cloud of God's presence. That experience is the great longing of humanity. Each of us longs to stand in a thin place and step through the veil where it parts. That longing has filled and continues to fill all time and places. It is what has encouraged pilgrims to journey to the holy places. It called our spiritual ancestors to the desert and to monasteries. And it's why we persevere in prayer and study. And it is, at least in part, hopefully, the reason we show up to church week after week. We want to come face to face with what is really real. And that is exactly what happened to Peter and James and John on that mountain. They came face to face with the real, with the holy. It was not simply an outer experience, one that could be experienced with human senses. No, it was an experience of inner transformation, one that left them silent, awestruck. And instead of talking about what they saw and heard, they became transformed themselves. They saw the light of Christ, and they saw that it was in them too. The veil had parted, and they beheld the beauty of their own creation in the image and likeness of God. But this isn't simply a story about Peter and James and John. It's a descriptive story of Christ's encounter with all of humanity. We, too, are called to those thin places. We, too, are invited to step through into the veil of these transformational experiences. Transfiguration is all around us. Jesus is always leading us to the thin places of our lives. But we don't often talk about our experiences of the thin places. Instead, like Peter and James and John, we keep silent, telling no one of our encounters. And it's not because those encounters aren't real. It's because they're too real. Too real for words sometimes. Because sometimes words can't describe an experience. We're now different and we can never go back to the way it was before. That moment of transfiguration now resides eternally within us. So perhaps today's story of the transfiguration of Jesus is actually an invitation to us to revisit the memories of the thin places in our lives. Instead of keeping the stories of your thin places to yourselves, why don't you share the stories of your transformation? When was the last time you told someone about how your life had changed? Friends, share. Perhaps in telling your story, you will find in others the kindred spirit of God. Perhaps in sharing, you will create a thin place yourself. And what a gift that would be. May it be so. Amen.
please be seated. <clears throat> um, at this time, we lift up our celebrations and our concerns and our prayer requests, anything that you have on your hearts and in your minds that you need to share and, and let the community hold with you. Um, just raise your hand and one of us will come around with the microphone. Also, please note the mustard colored paper in your bulletin that has a list of all of our prayer request people in our community who have requested prayers are on that. Please take it with you this week. Or if you're worshiping with us online, it's available in our Monday email as well um, for all the prayers for people in our community. All right, no? Okay, all right, let's be in a spirit of meditation and reflection and prayer together. Holy God, we enter into your presence and experience the joy of being together as a community of faith. This day, we ask you to calm our troubled minds, our grieving hearts, and restore us with your forgiveness and compassion. Let us, if we can, begin to enter into the experience both of Jesus and the three disciples who became eyewitnesses to the transfiguration. Let us climb the mountain with them. Let us leave behind our everyday concerns just for a little while. And let all of our senses focus on Jesus alone. Let nothing block us from the holy presence. Let anything that would distract us from the light of this revelation fall away from us. Show us your glory, God. Oh, that we could have been there with Jesus to see for ourselves the radiance and to hear the voice coming out of the clouds. You are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. We long, O oh, gracious God, to have an intimate relationship with Jesus like the disciples had. But we, like them, want to keep Jesus just for ourselves, too. And also, like them, we don't want to return, to go back down to face rejection, humiliation, and suffering in the day-to-day -day world. We'd so much rather stay on the mountain we like our comforts, our successes, and our own achievements. We hold on to pride and self-centeredness. We have way too much fear. We fear of being changed on the inside, giving up old ways of thinking and acting. We fear what life would be like if we became a new thing. And so we close ourselves off from the glory of your love and from the struggle and the joy of your ministry. Oh God, as you broke through in the world of your early disciples, so break through into us. As a community of faith, show us where your glory is to be found. Not only on the mountaintop, but among your people. God, remind us of your presence when we work with the poor, the hurting, the imprisoned, the oppressed, the brokenhearted. Help us to see you as we reach out to all those who suffer in this world. In all of this, may we experience your glory and our own transfiguration. Show us, O oh God, how to live our daily lives that we may glorify you in the common tasks of life. Let us focus on the radiance of Jesus' transfigured presence and work for a world transfigured in the glory of justice and love. All of this we pray for in the name of Jesus, 
saying together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> This is the time in our worship where we are invited to share our generosity. And I wanted to share, there was one, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. There was one phrase that jumped out at me as Carol was reading the scripture today. And it was, for we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And Reverend Beth in her sermon talked about sharing our experiences and in that way, we're sharing how the Holy Spirit lives in us, and we're also proclaiming and leading people to Jesus Christ and how the Holy Spirit can live in them as well. And as well as sharing, we are called to um, not only share our experiences, but share our time, our talent, and our treasure. And this is part in our worship where we recognize what time, talent, and treasure we have, as well as our experiences, to give back to the community. And in your bulletin, if you want to support our ministries financially, we have a Venmo cord. We also have the offering plate that's in the back of the sanctuary after worship. And that our financial contributions are the way that we support all the ministries of our church. They are all supported solely by our financial contributions. May you be blessed in your sharing. Thank you. <clears throat> 